Picture standing in a frozen cave, 50,000 years ago. The firelight flickers across stone walls, and beside you sits someone with a heavy brow, powerful shoulders, and eyes not so different from yours. For centuries, they've been called brutes. Dim, doomed, a failed experiment of evolution. But now, ancient DNA tells another story. A story of journeys across continents, of survival in the harshest climates, and of encounters that changed the very blueprint of who we are today. They were symbolic creatures, that they did do art. The question is, where did the Neanderthals really come from? And how much of them still lives inside us? For over 150 years, Neanderthals were painted as evolutionary dead ends. Textbooks showed them as hunched cavemen, a shadow chapter before we arrived. But the revolution of ancient DNA has shattered that stereotype. From Croatia's Vindija Cave, where the first high-quality Neanderthal genome was sequenced in 2010, to the Denisova Cave in Siberia. It's a, very, it's a very recent discovery. Where a single child's pinky bone revealed an entire new human species. Every discovery forces us to rethink the story. Today, we know that every non-African person alive carries between 1 and 2% of Neanderthal DNA. These fragments still shape our immune system, our metabolism, even how our skin reacts to sunlight. This isn't just their story, it's ours. Let's stop being so arrogant. Let's keep an open mind and see where it takes us. You're watching Stone and Bone. If ancient mysteries fascinate you, hit that subscribe button and join us as we uncover the forgotten chapters of our shared past. Roughly 600,000 years ago, Neanderthals and modern humans shared a common ancestor. Homo heidelbergensis. This species roamed across Africa and Eurasia, adapting to wildly different climates. Somewhere along the line, one branch began evolving into us, while another began to change into what we now call Neanderthals. But here's the twist. Neanderthals weren't a side project of evolution. They were a full human population, surviving in Ice Age Europe for hundreds of thousands of years. Fossil and DNA evidence shows they weren't scattered randomly, but spread across a range stretching from Spain to Siberia. And yet, their world was fragile. Genetic models suggest their global population may never have exceeded 50,000 to 70,000 individuals at any one time. That's smaller than the crowd at a football stadium, a species living on the edge, yet somehow enduring ice, predators, and scarcity for over 300,000 years. For decades, the textbook answer was simple. Neanderthals were Europeans, born and bred in Ice Age caves. But DNA is painting a far more complex picture. The earliest genetic traces suggest their roots may lie further east, in Central or even East Asia, before they made their way into Europe. Take the famous Altai Neanderthal, a female who lived more than 120,000 years ago in southern Siberia. Her DNA revealed something astonishing interbreeding with another mysterious human lineage, the Denisovans. This changes everything. Instead of one neat origin story, scientists now describe Neanderthal evolution as a braided river, multiple waves of migration flowing back and forth between Europe and Asia, mixing with cousins, replacing earlier groups, and adapting again and again. The Neanderthals weren't rooted in a single homeland. They were wanderers across continents. But what pushed them to keep moving? The answer is written in ice. The world they lived in was brutal. Europe and Asia swung between deep glacial freezes and short, warmer interludes. During the coldest periods, vast ice sheets forced Neanderthal bands south into refugees. When the climate eased, they surged north again, following herds across grasslands and forests. These constant movements were both a blessing and a curse. They allowed Neanderthals to adapt stocky builds for conserving heat, larger noses for warming frozen air, even higher thresholds for pain. But they also fractured populations. Small groups cut off from each other shrank, and their genetic diversity thinned. Each cold snap or failed hunt wasn't just a setback. It could erase a family line forever. The Neanderthal story is one of survival against odds, played out under the shadow of advancing glaciers. And survival meant encounters, 
not just with the mammoths and cave lions they hunted, but with other humans. Neanderthals interbred at least three times that we know of, with Denisovans in Asia, leaving DNA still found in Tibetans and Melanesians today, with early modern humans, not just 60,000 years ago, when our ancestors left Africa, but at least 200,000 years ago, far earlier than anyone imagined, with mysterious, as yet unidentified, ghost populations hinted at in DNA fragments. The Denisova cave in Siberia gave us one of the most extraordinary finds of all, a teenage girl whose mother was Neanderthal and father Denisovan. She was a first-generation hybrid, living proof that these groups weren't isolated. They mingled, and their legacy lives on in us. Every non-African alive today carries 1-2% to 2 Neanderthal DNA. Some gene clusters protect us from pathogens. Others shape how we metabolize fat or respond to UV light. Yet some come at a cost, higher risks of autoimmune diseases or even severe COVID-19. Far from being extinct, Neanderthals are still influencing how we live and die inside our very cells. For too long, Neanderthals were seen as little more than strong arms with stone tools. But archaeology tells a richer story. They mastered the Mousterian toolkit, finely crafted flint blades, scrapers for hides, and wooden spears hardened by fire. At sites like Schoningen in Germany, eight spears over 300,000 years old reveal hunting strategies requiring teamwork and planning. And then there's culture. In Shanidar Cave, Iraq, Neanderthals buried their dead, sometimes with pollen traces that may point to flowers, perhaps even ritual. In Croatia's Krapina site, Eagle talons were shaped into ornaments, suggesting symbolic expression. And in Spain, hand stencils painted in red ochre, dated to over 60,000 years ago, predate modern human arrival. Evidence that Neanderthals were the first artists of Europe. Quick thought, what do you think? If Neanderthals were painting caves or wearing ornaments, does that count as culture in the same way we use the word today? Drop your answer in the comments. I'd love to hear your take. They were not mute shadows. They were storytellers, toolmakers, and perhaps even singers around the fire. Their culture whispers that they thought about life and maybe even about death. So why, with all their resilience, did Neanderthals disappear around 40,000 years ago? DNA offers part of the answer. Late Neanderthal populations were tiny, fragmented, and heavily inbred. This genetic bottleneck reduced their ability to adapt, leaving them vulnerable to disease and environmental stress. Meanwhile, modern humans surged into their territories, armed with advantages Neanderthals lacked. Broader trade networks linking groups over vast distances, more flexible tools, blade technology, bone needles, even fishing equipment, larger cooperative groups with wider social ties climate instability delivered the final blow. As ice advanced and resources shrank, Neanderthal bands dwindled. By the time modern humans painted the caves of France, the last Neanderthals were fading from the map. But to say they lost is misleading. They didn't vanish without a trace. They left their mark in us. Today, when you look in the mirror, you may be seeing more Neanderthal than you realize. Their DNA is stitched into ours, genes that influence skin color and hair thickness, helping humans adapt to northern climates. Variants that regulate how we metabolize fat, critical for surviving ice age winters. Immune system genes that helped fight ancient pathogens, but in today's world can trigger autoimmune disorders like lupus or Crohn's disease. Incredibly, some Neanderthal genes even shape our response to modern pandemics. A 2020 study found a DNA segment inherited from them increases risk of severe COVID-19 by up to 60%, while another variant offers protection. The truth is, Neanderthals didn't really go extinct. They live on in our blood, our biology, and even in our illnesses. Their story is not a closed book. It's written into who we are. The most exciting part? The Neanderthal story is still unfolding. 
Thanks to advances in DNA sequencing, scientists can now recover genetic material from cave sediments, even when no bones remain. Traces of Neanderthal DNA have been found in the very dirt they walked on, or trapped in the hardened plaque of fossilized teeth. Since 2010, researchers have sequenced more than 20 Neanderthal genomes, piecing together not just individuals, but entire family lineages. This work earned Svante Pabo the 2022 Nobel Prize in Medicine, recognition of a field that has changed everything we know about human evolution. It, and with each new discovery, whether in a forgotten cave in Spain, the highlands of Siberia, or the soils of the Caucasus, we get closer to answering the ultimate question, not just who the Neanderthals were, but who we are. So where did Neanderthals really come from? Not from a single birthplace, but from a network of journeys stretching from Asia to Europe. Their DNA braided with ours through encounters and migrations, their culture expressed in tools, art and burials, their survival tested against the brutal cold of Ice Age winters. They weren't evolutionary failures. They were survivors, innovators, and kin, humans in every sense. And though their last bones vanished 40,000 years ago, their legacy beats on in our blood. Look at your reflection. And remember, you may be carrying more Neanderthal than you think. If you found this journey into deep time fascinating, don't forget to subscribe to Stone and Bone, because the deeper we dig into the past, the clearer we see ourselves.